O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. Amen. O Lord, have mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. Bless your ministers with righteousness, and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fights for us, but only you, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, do not take your Holy Spirit from us. The First Book of Kings, Chapter 6 In the 480th year after Israelites left Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, during the month of Zib, the second month, he began building the Lord's Temple. The temple King Solomon built for the Lord was 90 feet long, 30 feet wide and 45 feet high. The porch in front of the main hall was 30 feet long, corresponding to the width of the temple, and it was 15 feet wide, extending out from the front of the temple. He made framed windows for the temple. He built an extension all around the walls of the temple's main hall and holy place, and constructed side rooms in it. 
The bottom floor of the extension was seven and a half feet wide, the middle floor nine feet wide and the third floor ten and a half feet wide. He made ledges on the temple's outer walls so that the beams would not have to be inserted into the walls. As the temple was being built, only stones shaped at the quarry were used. The sound of hammers, pickaxes or any other iron tool was not heard at the temple while it was being built. The entrance to the bottom level of the side rooms was on the south side of the temple. Stairs went up to the middle floor and then on up to the third floor. He finished building the temple and covered it with rafters and board made of cedar. He built an extension all the round of the temple. It was seven and a half feet high and was attached to the temple by cedar beams. The Lord said to Solomon, As for this temple you are building, if you follow my rules, observe my regulations and obey all my commandments, I will fulfill through you the promises I made to your father David. I will live among the Israelites and will not abandon my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us
The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5. Because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began persecuting him. And so he told them, My father, my father is working until now, and so I too am working. For this reason the Jewish leaders were trying even harder to kill him. But not because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, thus making himself equal to God. So Jesus answered them, I tell you the solemn truth, the Son can do nothing on his own initiative, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he does, and will show him greater deeds than these, that you will be amazed. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. Furthermore, the Father does not judge anyone, but has assigned all judgment to the Son, so that all people will honour the Son, just as they honour the Father. The one who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. I tell you the solemn truth, the one who hears my message and believes the one who sent me has eternal life, and will not be condemned but has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the solemn truth, the time is coming, it's already here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and he has granted the Son authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, because a time is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out. The ones who have done what is good to the resurrection resulting in life, and the ones that have done evil to the resurrection resulting in condemnation. I can do nothing on my own initiative, for just as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will but the will of the one who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies about me, and I know the testimony he gives about me is true. You have said to John that he has testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a lamp that was burning and shining, and he wanted to rejoice greatly for a short time in his light. But I have a testimony greater than that from John, for the deeds that the Father has assigned to me to complete, indeed the deeds I am now doing, testify about me that the Father has sent me. The Father who has sent me has himself given witness about me. You people have never heard his voice or seen his form at any time, nor do you have his word residing in you, because you do not believe the one whom he sent. You study the scriptures thoroughly, because you think in them you possess eternal life, and it is these same scriptures that testify about me. But you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. I do not accept praise from people, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe, if you accept praise from one another, and do not seek the praise that comes only from God? Do not suppose that I will accuse you before the Father. For the one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what Moses wrote, how you will you believe my words? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and collect for peace. O God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for our safe preservation. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, to do always that which is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, let me accept calmly all that this day might bring me, and let me devote myself completely to your sacred will. Direct me and help me each hour of this day. Control my thoughts and feelings in all my deeds and words. When unpredictable circumstances arise, do not let me forget that everything comes from you. Lord Jesus, Son of God, it is better not to live than to live without you. I thank you, God, for the gift of this new day and for all the good deeds you will help me do today. Holy Spirit, help me to dedicate this day to my Lord and Saviour. Teach me to be just toward my brother and sister, never to provoke wrath or cause sorrow. Control my will and teach me to pray, to believe, to hope, to suffer, to forgive and to love. Amen. We pray for the work of your faithful servants throughout the world, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and forevermore. Amen.